Hi, I'm Felicia. And I'm Michaela, and here's our review of The Witch's Brew. Okay, so in this game, players are at a potion making competition. The point of this game is to make as many potions as possible. You will do this by playing different roles in the competition. In the box, you will get cards, some wooden tokens that represent ingredients, tokens that represent vials, and tokens that represent gold nuggets. Each player chooses a color and gets a deck of 12 cards from that color. Let me explain some of the cards a player gets in his or her deck. Three of the cards are green. These green cards are used to gain ingredients. They are the wolf keeper, the snake hunter, and the herb collector. Then you have yellow cards. These are used to trade gold for vials. Ingredients for gold or gold for ingredients. They are the assistant, the alchemist, and the fortune teller. You also get blue cards. These are used to make potions with your ingredients. They are the wizard, the druid, and the witch. The two red cards are used to buy potions from the stores, using other players' stuff. They are the begging monk and the cut purse. Finally, you get one card called the warlock, which is used to cast the spell in the spellbook on that round. All of these cards are never picked up at random. They form a deck that you will be able to pick cards from during the game. The setup is simple. At the center of the table, you will make five piles of cards. Each pile of cards are placed face up and in the order of victory points, highest being at the bottom of the deck. These piles are the store where you can buy potions by using ingredients and by playing the begging monk card, the store where you can buy potions by using gold nuggets and by playing the cut purse card, the black potion deck where you can make a potion with your ingredients and by playing the witch card, the bronze potion deck where you can make a potion with your ingredients and by playing the wizard card, the silver potion deck where you can make a potion with your ingredients and by playing the druid card, and the spell book where you can use the warlock to cast that spell if you have what the spell needs. Then, each player gets three ingredients and two gold nuggets. You're now ready to start playing the game. Each player simultaneously takes five cards from his deck. He can choose whatever five cards he wants to play with for that round. So for example, if he needs ingredients, he will choose green cards. Or if he needs gold, he will choose yellow cards. And if he needs to create a potion, he will use blue cards. Here is where your strategy is formed. While choosing your cards, you must try to see what other players will choose from their decks as well. Because if a player plays the same card as you, they basically cancel your card. The easiest way to explain this is by actually giving an example of a round. So the first player begins by playing one of his five cards. He decides to play the Druid card and says, I am the Druid. If the next player does not have that card, he must pass. And if none of the other players have that card, then the first player can do the upper half of the card, which is to take a silver potion by spending the ingredients needed. In this case, it would be one green ingredient called an herb. He then takes that potion card and just made two victory points. Next is player two's turn. He needs red ingredients, known as wolf blood. So he plays the wolf keeper card and says, I am the wolf keeper. In doing this, the first player loses the chance to become the Wolf Keeper and gains nothing. The last player to play the Wolf Keeper card gets to take three red ingredients. However, if you think the next player also has that card and he will cancel yours, then you can choose to do the lower half of the card and say, so be it, to the first player. Doing this means you automatically get what the card says, but you get much less of it. So for the Druid, if you were to say, so be it, you automatically get one herb instead of three. So basically, each player is taking turns trying to play roles during the competition to gain whatever is needed to make potions. As the competition goes on, the potions become harder and harder to acquire. If someone plays the Warlock card and no one else has it, he can then do whatever the top spell card says to do. If it says, pay any ingredient to make a black potion, then that player may do so. Basically, each card has a lower half that player can choose to play. These never get cancelled, so it's up to the players to decide. Do I want to take over the role and risk being taken over by the next players? Or do I say, so be it, and just gain a small portion of that card? Once all the cards have been used, the top card from the spellbook changes, and the player chooses another five cards from the deck. The game goes on until there are four crows showing on the table. 
Once that happens, the game ends and players count how many victory points they have made plus the number of vials they acquired. It's kind of complicated to get into. You might be reading the rulebook a couple of times, but once you've got it, it's fast paced, strategic, and the player interaction is great. I just love going last and saying, no, I'm the witch. I had a great time. Love the concept and the games don't last that long. You can play a couple of games in one hour once you know the rules. Yeah, I liked it too. Don't really know why, but it was appealing to me. And I also like the concept. The artwork is nice. The only things that bothered me was that the wooden tokens are a little small and that there isn't enough gold nuggets if you play five people. You can bluff and play mind games. It's great. I'm gonna give it a 7.5 on 10. Yeah, the ingredients are a little small and we did need to add tokens to the game, but overall it's a fun game. Like you said, bluffing and laughing most of the time. I'm gonna give it an 8 on 10.